-hmm. Okay, so you guys are in St. Louis doing some press and you've had a really busy day. What all have you guys done today? Uh, Tim and Andrew played the Fox 2 morning show this morning and then we just had lunch with um, Andy Zaleski at the RFT and now we get to spend an hour with you and, uh, and then we are going to dinner with Kevin Johnson from the uh, uh, Post-Dispatch and then uh, more rehearsing. We've been doing a lot of rehearsing, getting ready for the tour and we play a show on Saturday so it's, we've been busy. Awesome, okay. That was Tim Harvey. <laughs> You guys have a new album out on September 7th, um, Prepare the Preparations, and your first single has been out, Whipped Cream. Um, what was the idea behind that, that video with all the, the fun mess? <laughs> How did that come about? <laughs> um, the, which, uh, we actually made two. We did one ourselves, um, which we did when we were in New York, which is basically us just putting uh, whipped cream on everything we could find, including random people in Central Park. Um, and that came from the idea of literally translating the uh, theme of the song, which was I Want It with Whipped Cream on it. And then um, we did another video out in L.A., um, which was... Uh, just some dancing, and we had some Ludo fans come out and um, sort of mocking some of the sort of high budget, high budget rock and rap yeah. videos and our own little whipped cream spin on those. And it all turned into a whipped cream fight, and it was a good time. <laughs> also, Tim Convey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can one of you guys tell me a little bit about the album? Can you give us some sneak preview about um, some of the content or some of the song titles that are on there? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, in terms of titles, there's things like Cyborgs vs. Robots is a title, Rotten Town, Skeletons on Parade, um, Safe in the Dark, which is funny, because Skeletons on Parade makes you think that you would not be safe in the dark, <laughs> uh, Whipped Cream, Battle Cry, but anyway, it's, um, it's, it's not, like, I don't know how to say it, because it's like, it's not like a huge departure from the last record. It's just like we did it kind of better and a little more comfortable and extended uh, the things that we wanted to do on the last record. Just kind of did it all better and deeper. So that's Farrell. Tim Farrell. Are you guys planning to stay a four-piece for the time being, or are you looking at being a five-piece again someday? I, I, I think we're pretty settled that it's just going to be the four of us. I mean, should that amazing person present themselves, I'm sure, you know, or, or who knows how many people, and I'm sure we wouldn't be against it, but uh, I think the plan is for it just to be the, the four of us. We're such different personalities and schedules and everything else anyway that this is kind of good. And, and, and it's to have a, you know, we've had different friends play bass with us, and it always kind of keeps things fresh and allows us to kind of bring new people in. So, uh, yeah, I'd say four piece for sure. Okay, cool. All right, here is the quintessential dumb St. Louis question. Where did you go to high school? <laughs> uh, I went to uh, St. Louis Priory. I didn't go to high school in St. Louis. I'm not from St. Louis. Oh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I never okay. talked to interviews. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid of that question. <laughs> here it is. I went to St. Louis University High School, and Andrew went to John Burroughs. Okay, thank you for answering for him. Um, I don't know if you guys are old enough for this question because there's like a generational thing, but do you remember Underoos? Yeah. Okay, I would like to know if you had Underoos, what character did you have? I, f I'm, I feel like I, uh, Spider-Man, I think, is, what, is the only thing that's coming to mind. You're Spider-Man guy. Yeah, I, well, no, I don't, I don't consider myself a Spider-Man guy, but when you asked me about Underoos, I had that's what, maybe my, my parents were trying to lead me down a Spider-Man road and I veered somewhere and, and went Batman and, the rest is history, as I said. But, uh, climbed walls. Like yeah. Them climbed yeah. Walls. I think my brother ended up being more of a spine, but yeah, that's all I can think of. Okay, that is Condi. Here's Matt. Also boring again. I'm sorry, but I didn't do underoos. Okay, that's all right. You, you might have missed that. <laughs> I think oh, I just missed it. it. I remember my brother, older brother, had underoos, but I think I just missed it. See, I don't think I had underoos, but if I did, it would have been one of four options. <laughs> it would have been either... Superman would have been the most likely. I still have my Superman sheets from when I was a kid. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> and they're awesome. He-Man? Uh, He-Man would have been number two, tied with Transformers. Oh, oh yeah. No, this is all great. No, it's not. Did you see it in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No. That's that's what we were, we were so cool. if it would have been, if I would have gone beyond that critical three, it would have been Batman. Yeah. That all, everything you just said actually rings bells. 
I think I might have had all of those. And you now wear the Frank Zappa under, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. They're basically just a goatee on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was Tim Phil with the Zappa under Thank you. after that. That's conclusion. What is <laughs> the, the strangest fan story or the most overwhelming time that you had to deal with? I don't know. I hate answering that because it's, it's, it, I don't know. Here, more than that, you People know what's weird? crazy. No, no, no. You, no. Know. Yeah. It, you know what's weird is that when, like, and it's more around here that, like, there is a larger group of people that, like, are willing to stay late or try to find us or whatever. Like, the weird thing is we try to take that and put it into some format where you actually can see people and that ends up being, like, a signing or something. But then, like, the only way to actually do that and actually get to people is to, like, only be able to sign certain things or people don't want you, like, if you're doing it, then the people who are putting on the signing will be like, well, we don't want you to take pictures because that takes too long. And then it ends up being this weird thing where it's like, well, we're trying to hang out and be able to see everybody. But then the only way to do that is to not be able to do all the fun stuff that people want to do when they catch you and see you anyway. And so it's like, you don't know what's better. Is it better to just, like, randomly have a couple of people hang out and do everything or is it... Cause you can't you can't make it fit it all in you can't make it work so I don't know I don't know it's like it's this strange I don't know what's better yeah in terms of crazy I don't know people are always like leaving stuff from the van or the van that they think is ours um, and I don't know we get all Outside kinds of, of cool, cool gifts but I mean I think we're fortunate that it's it's for the most part we identify well with our fans and know where they're coming from and it's not like the crazy you know it's not like underwear and stuff like that <laughs> it's like <laughs> cool gifts and, and, you know, people expressing things about what the music means to them and, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a boring answer, I guess. That's a good <laughs> answer. Okay, that would lead me into, as far as autographing, have you ever asked, been asked to autograph anything strange? Oh, yeah. We've signed just yeah. about every body part, every type of clothing, every um, stuffed animal, cell I, I like it when it's like Guess what, like shoes and cell phones, we sign them all the time. So if you're gonna have a signed one, don't be like, I know this is crazy, <laughs> but would you sign my shoe? And we're like, it's the 15th one today. Um, we just played Columbia and some fans brought some bottles of whipped cream. Oh yeah. Oh, that was yeah, interesting. That's <laughs> that was the first time that's happened. So wow. we'll see what happens on this Yeah, I'm sure we'll be signing on some <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which, for the record, I'm okay if I don't ever see a bottle of whipped cream uh, yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask for the record, do you prefer Ready Whip or Cool Whip or the kind that you mix yourself? Tim and I are vegan, so. Soy Whip. Yeah. Soy Whip. Okay, yeah. cool. But I won't even eat that, so. <laughs> Let's face it. The stuff under the whipped cream is always better. Ice cream or yeah. whatever else happens to you. <laughs> Hot dog. <laughs> Do you think there are any misconceptions about Ludo? No, no. Not one no. single misconception. It's all out there. Ah, Andrew. Hi! Good. Good. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> oh, that's okay. We just went ahead and started an interview. Pull up a chair. <laughs> we can get the comfy chair if you want. That one's much better. No, I think I've earned this. Okay. <laughs> um, are there misconceptions about Ludo? Um, I think I think it's better to to just you know let people make continue whatever whatever, they, whatever they want <laughs> and then you just let them have it. They can have it. Yeah. I mean, I think yes. Okay, I'm going to ask, ask each one of you guys, um, which one of your songs is your favorite to perform so far and why? <clears throat> Andrew. Uh, Love and Dead, I'm taking it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, new song called Rotten Town that we're playing on this tour. I love it. There's a big, crazy vocal arrangement where we're doing rounds and everything at the end. and It's a lot of fun. Very cool. Yeah, I'll give you a... a a Rotten Town or a Lake Pontchartrain. That was Farrell. I like Lake Pontchartrain as well because it's, um, I don't know, a lot of things happen. It's a story. It's crazy. I really like the parts that I get to play on it. And uh, so, yeah, it's my favorite, I think. Okay. The crowd sings along. It's fun. All right. Real quick, what are some hobbies that you have that are separate from music, non-musical things that you like to do or maybe something you like to collect? Andrew? 
I like to hike and I used to collect mad magazines. Now I want to sell them. <laughs> uh, I just took up golfing about a year ago, so I've been doing that for a little while now. <laughs> Daryl? Uh, besides music stuff, I kind of just meditate and hang out with my wife and dogs. So. Um, I like the Cardinals a lot. I like to watch baseball, go to baseball games, and... Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, I think I'm a liar. I forgot. Non-music, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, a lot. Of, I mess with food a lot, so I like I'm a raw vegan now, and so like I, I make a lot of raw food. Oh, cool. So, uh, it, what is something that always makes you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say comedy. Uh, comedy. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I think comedy is a good. Answer. You know. Sesame Street actually makes me laugh. A lot of funny stuff goes on there. These Muppets can be very funny. I love Sesame Street. It's yeah. an awesome show. It's really good. Two Mood levels. levels. Yeah, there are two <laughs> levels. How they do it. Secret success. Uh, Chris Farley movies? <laughs> very good. Does that work? <laughs> that works. <laughs> uh, my dogs and Steve Bear. watching um, like YouTube videos and laughing because he will start laughing immediately as if it's the funniest thing he's ever seen and that makes me laugh. Even thinking about laughing. Yeah, he can't contain himself. It's great. It's so great. Okay, whoever has an answer for this can answer. How many members of Ludo does it take to change a light bulb? One, I think one could get it done. I think just True. Two hands. Okay, that's good. That's the way it should be. Right. That means you're normal. I mean, should, is that where we, we should interject a joke about like, oh, well, just one of us holds it and the world spins around us or something? <laughs> yes. That's where you, that's where you interject it. <laughs> right. We'll get back. Have you had any embarrassing moments playing live? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one time we were playing in Warrensburg, Missouri, and I was doing the splits, and Tim Conby swept the leg, just like in Karate Kid. He just turned around, looked at me, and he had this look in his eye, this just mischievous, don't give a fuck about anything look, and he just kicked my foot out, and I went straight down. My groin was in crazy Overrun. terror pain, uh, and I fell. Ouch. Yeah, it was, uh, it was terrifying. That was Andrew. Okay, Matt. Uh, most likely, but off the top of my head, I don't think it's anything so severe that it sticks out in my mind. Yeah. One time he started having an allergic reaction to something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And during the set, his whole body started to itch, and like he was kind of convulsing and didn't no, know. No, it wouldn't. What, was it embarrassing? Was that the original? No, that was just more terrifying. I don't think that was yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. 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 More <laughs> um, I'm get me out of here. I'm usually, at some point in the show, I'm convinced that my uh, fly is unzipped. <laughs> it's never, it has never actually occurred, but I'm generally <laughs> assured of it at some point, and I have to kind of finagle away during a song to figure out that it's not. <laughs> Sometimes I freak out because I realize my fly is up. And I'm like, How can everyone... That's not right. Wait, yeah. <laughs> the door has to be open. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, just, I like tell this every time, but... Hi, years ago, uh, we were playing a show in Muncie, Indiana, and within the first uh, 30 seconds of our show, cracked my head on my keyboard and um, oh. bled from the head quite a bit and uh, went to the emergency room afterwards and got fixed and I have a scar still in my head. So you still played the show with a bloody head? Yeah, I didn't play it very well. well I was still, I, you were I there. I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, weird vision things, and I played a few correct notes, and... Um, yeah, but I played the show. Well, that's good that it takes a lot more than bird poop to keep you guys from playing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're working on that. We're gonna get to moment. Oh, and I also I get to point. pretty regularly announced that this next song is called whatever, and it's not the right song. And that's always embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> do people catch that? Well, they do. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they would have to know. What? <laughs> yeah. Gandhi. <laughs> so when that happens, do you just ignore him and follow the set list, or do you have to change everything? Well, they, oh, no. Try to parade him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just... More like dessert. Berate them in front of everybody. But he's witty. He can make a quick joke, and then people laugh, and then we don't lose them. It's, it's all fine. <laughs> that works. Jazz hands. Is there somebody from history that you admire? Andrew. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I really think George Washington got it done. Uh, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. Actually, all three of the the, tri, the first the trifecta, you know, John Adams. I saw the documentary, and you know, pretty incredible stuff. You know, we knew, we know now, and anachronistically, that America had, was going to exist. It had to exist. But at the time, they were all committing treason. They could have been hung. They, they were they were rebels. Their country didn't exist. They they made it out of nothing. I admire them. <laughs> Very wonderful. Uh, Christopher Columbus, I just, I, I like how he came in and took all the credit for, you know, finding America. I, I admire that. <laughs> in 1492, yeah. how does that go? <laughs> I wrote an editorial in college about how horrible Christopher Columbus was for the school newspaper. I'm more of an Amerigo Bellagucci fan. He actually knew he was in a new place. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a well, big... that's why we call it America. Wait, was he an explorer? I thought he was a, just a yeah, map maker. Yeah, that put his name on it. He got it done. He, he, he went out. He, he got. He came. Yeah. He did it. He did. Yeah. So, so I understand. So he could. Oh, Wikipedia. Cartograph. Uh. It's agreed. I, I mean, geez, I don't know if I have another. Uh, uh Nicholas, Nikola Tesla. He was a uh, kind of a genius. Um, he was basically, if you think of like a. Um, you know, the invention of the light bulb and electric current and uh, all of those sorts of things. He was kind of ahead of the game and ahead of Edison. Um, and uh, he basically invented all the things that would now allow us to have, like, wireless transmissions and would allow us to probably have free energy. Um, and uh, he was just, just off his rocker. So, yeah, in a good way. He's best known for in the to get getting patents on things before Edison. Unfortunately. Yeah, which was usually tied into his. He had a falling out with J.P. Morgan, uh, and uh, they basically, you know, Tesla Motors decided to crash out with an electric car. That no, it's like already out. Yeah. yeah, but it's not like affordable. Uh, no, it's not. It's like 250 grand or something. Yeah, yeah. But it's 400 miles of charge. Wow, that's amazing. And, and it's yes. like a sports car. I mean, it's like beautiful, yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, Tesla. Thinking really hard this whole time on how to outdo any of that, and I just can't. It could be recent history. It could be one of these guys. It could be anybody. Like yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Earlier today. I can't. I don't know. What do you guys think? Strong. Uh, I'm sorry. Those That's okay. Really how do you really admire? Those really strong answers. And I was like, I could make a joke, or I could pick someone even like cooler. I got nothing. What do you think? It's always. I'll come up with somebody. Okay, that's okay. Um, History. Can you just tell me briefly, uh, do you remember what the very first Ludo gig was like, your first public performance together? Uh, yes. yes. Old band? It was auto right. shit. It was terrible. August of 2003. Early August. August. Indianapolis, Indiana. 2003. There was a, dude, a, a drunken dude afterward oh, who screamed, you guys sound like good Charlotte, is that correct? Probably. With your TRL, Good, so with your TRL shit. Yes. But the, we were TRL playing shit. to a bar at one in the morning for 20 minutes, and it, Matt's drum set, which is the house drum set, was sliding. <laughs> Just moving. <laughs> Just moving. Yeah, shifted moving. Every, in all sorts of moving. different directions. Uh, it was terrible. Humble and, beginnings. And Convy screamed at the guy, "Nice haircut," which didn't help anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy in history. That's when we knew. <laughs> yeah. I admire the most. <laughs> That's when we knew. Okay, wrap this up. Um, what is in the future for Ludo? A tour. A tour and a record coming out. So, it's a brave new world. A lot of things happening. 
It's gonna be intense. Okay. Hope oh, he's ready. Kids are ready. That's that's what's in store. Anything to add? Uh, nobody can tell the future. Give a hand like That's true. <laughs> He'd be assassinated. Well, just stuff that stuff that's going on right now is the you know, obviously the records out September seventh. Um, we have a contest going on where. Um, we're having fans make their own whipped cream videos with them doing things with whipped cream, which people should check out. Um, we'll be at the pageant October 17th, um, and then we're playing an in-store vintage vinyl on September 8th, um, where people can, uh, if they pre-order the album or get it that day, they get to come to see us play acoustically inside uh, vintage vinyl. And, um, yeah, that's it. This tour is going to be good. Good bands. It'll be fun. Okay, cool. That was Tim Kimey. We're done.